Recycling might be gaining popularity now. But did you know that only about 9% of all plastic ever made has been recycled? Sad but true. Thankfully, more and more plastic bottles are making their way to the recycling plant. But how exactly are plastic bottles recycled and what are they even made of? All your questions will be answered if you watch this video till the end. But before we begin, subscribe to our channel right away if you're eager to know how things are really made from scratch. The birth of a plastic bottle. Let's start at the very beginning. Before a plastic bottle ever lands in your hands, it has a wild origin story. Believe it or not, most plastic bottles start as oil and gas. Yes, the same stuff that powers your car also plays a role in making the bottles that hold your favorite drinks. Factories take these raw materials and use a chemical process called polymerization to turn them into PET, short for polyethylene terephthalate. Try saying that five times fast without tripping over your tongue. Anyway, PET is a superhero in the plastic world. It's lightweight, durable, and doesn't leak weird chemicals into your drink which is a pretty good thing unless you enjoy a little mystery with your beverages. And because it's so tough, it can hold its shape without cracking or breaking, making it perfect for everything from soda to water to those fancy vitamin drinks that make you feel healthy just by holding them. But before it looks like the bottle you know and love, PET goes through a transformation. Factories heat it up until it melts. Then they mold it into small test tube shaped pieces called preforms. These tiny plastic tubes don't look like bottles yet, but don't worry, they're about to go through a serious glow up. Factories use superheated air to stretch and inflate them into the full-size bottles you see on store shelves. Think of it like blowing up a balloon, except instead of floating away, this one is about to be filled with soda or water and sent out into the world. Once the bottles are shaped, they get cut, smoothed, and tested to make sure they won't burst under pressure. Because let's be real, nobody wants an exploding soda bottle in their hands. If they pass the tests, the bottles move down the assembly line, where they get filled, capped, labeled, and packed into boxes. From there, they're sent to stores, vending machines, and gas stations, just waiting for someone like you to grab one. And that, my friend, is how a plastic bottle is born. But the story doesn't end there, because once you finish your drink, your bottle faces two very different fates. It can either end up as trash, forgotten and alone in a landfill for hundreds of years, or it can get a second chance at life through recycling. Speaking of which, let's see what happens when you decide to do the right thing and give your bottle another shot. Speaking of doing the right thing, it'll be great if you share this video with your pals so they can learn too. From your hand to the recycling plant. So you've just downed the last sip of your drink, and now you're holding an empty plastic bottle. What do you do next? Toss it in the trash? Nope, because if you're a responsible human who cares about the planet, you'll drop it into a recycling bin instead. That simple action sets off a crazy adventure that your bottle never saw coming. Once it's in the recycling bin, the journey begins. Your bottle joins a bunch of other recyclables, maybe some soda cans or an old newspaper or that pizza box you should have thrown away last week. Recycling trucks come by and collect these bins from homes, schools and businesses, hauling them off to recycling centers. Imagine a road trip, but instead of a fun playlist and snacks, your bottle is surrounded by a bunch of other discarded items, hoping for a fresh start. At the recycling center, the bottles meet their fellow recyclables. And this is where things get serious. First, they go through a sorting process. Humans and machines work together to separate everything into categories. Plastics, metals, paper, and so on. But not all plastics are the same. So the bottles need to be sorted by type. Pet bottles like yours get their own special section so they can go through the proper recycling steps. Next up, the bottles get a much needed bath. Because let's be honest, They've been through a lot and they're probably covered in leftover soda, sticky juice, and who knows what else. During this process, a giant washing machine scrubs them clean, removing any labels, glue, or bits of leftover liquid. This step is super important because a dirty plastic bottle can ruin the whole recycling process. Nobody wants a contaminated batch of plastic, just like nobody wants a soggy french fry in their bag. Once the bottles are clean and fresh, 
they get shredded into tiny plastic flakes using a high-powered machine. It's like a high-tech blender for plastic. Now these little flakes are much easier to melt down and turn into new products. But before they move on, they go through one final check to make sure no unwanted materials snuck in. Any leftover caps or labels get filtered out, leaving behind pure pet flakes ready for their next adventure. And just like that, your old bottle is no longer just trash. It's now raw material, waiting to be transformed into something brand new. But before I tell you how that happened, drop a comment and tell us how much recycling goes on in your area. Someone out there needs to know. Melting and molding. All right, it's time to turn up the heat. These plastic flakes have been cleaned, shredded, and prepped. Now they're about to face extreme temperatures in the next step of their recycling journey. If plastic bottles had feelings, this would be the moment they started sweating. The flakes are sent into huge industrial dryers to remove any remaining moisture. This is an important step because water and melted plastic do not mix well. If there's too much moisture, the plastic could weaken, and nobody wants a flimsy recycled product. Once the flakes are dry, they're funneled into massive furnaces or extruders, which heat them up to over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than your oven when you're trying to cook a frozen pizza in record time. As the flakes melt, they turn into a thick gooey liquid. Think of it like melted cheese, but you know, way less tasty. This molten plastic is then forced through filters to remove any last bits of contamination. After that, it's shaped into long spaghetti-like strands or tiny plastic pellets. These pellets are the real MVPs of the recycling process because they can be used to make any kinds of new products. Some pellets get sent off to manufacturers who turn them into fabric. Yep, your old plastic bottle could become part of a new stylish t-shirt, a cozy fleece jacket, or even a pair of sneakers. Other pellets go on to become carpets, furniture, or packaging materials. And of course, some are transformed back into brand new bottles, ready to be filled with water, soda, or juice all over again. The molding process varies depending on what the recycled plastic is being turned into. If it's going to be a new bottle, the molten plastic is poured into a mold shaped like a bottle. Once it cools and hardens, it's trimmed, polished, and ready to go. If the plastic is being used for something else like fibers for clothing, it's stretched and spun into thin threads before being woven into fabric. That means your fleece hoodie might have once been a soda bottle. Mind-blowing, right? The beauty of this whole process is that plastic can be recycled multiple times. A bottle today could be a t-shirt tomorrow and a bottle again next year. That is, as long as people keep recycling. Unfortunately, not all plastic makes it back to the system. So I'll be telling you why recycling correctly is so important. But you have to subscribe to my channel. It'll only take you a second. Why recycling matters today and in the future. Now, recycling plastic bottles isn't just a good idea. It's a game changer for the planet. We produce millions of tons of plastic every year, and most of it ends up in landfills, oceans, or places it shouldn't be. Unfortunately, plastic doesn't just disappear. It takes hundreds of years to break down, and even then, it turns into tiny pieces called microplastics that end up in our water, soil, and even the food we eat. That means every time you take a bite of seafood or drink a glass of water, you might be swallowing tiny bits of plastic. Gross, right? Scientists have even found microplastics in human blood, which is a little too close for comfort. By recycling, we cut down on pollution, save energy, and reduce the demand for new plastic. That means fewer oil resources are used and less harmful gases released into the air. Most people don't realize this, but making plastic from scratch requires a lot of fossil fuels. Every time a new plastic bottle is made, factories burn oil and natural gas, releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This is one of the reasons climate change is getting worse. But when we recycle, we reuse plastic that's already been made, which means factories don't have to start from zero. That saves energy and reduces pollution. In fact, recycling a single plastic bottle can save enough energy to power a light bulb for hours. Imagine how much energy we could save if every plastic bottle was recycled instead of thrown away. Another major problem with plastic waste is how it affects animals. Every year, millions of sea creatures, birds, and land animals die because of plastic pollution. Some get tangled in plastic bags, soda rings, or fishing nets. Others mistake plastic for food, 
eating bottle caps and wrappers that their bodies can't digest. A dead whale was once found with over 80 pounds of plastic in its stomach. That's like swallowing an entire suitcase full of trash. Even tiny sea creatures like plankton end up eating microplastics, which then get passed up the food chain. That means bigger fish eat them, and eventually so do humans. Recycling helps stop this problem before it starts by keeping plastic out of the environment in the first place. Now let's talk about landfills. These giant trash mountains are growing bigger every day, and a huge part of that is plastic waste. Since plastic takes centuries to break down, a plastic bottle thrown away today could still be sitting in a landfill when your great-great-grandkids are around. And as plastic sits there, it doesn't just take up space. It also releases chemicals that can leak into the ground and water supply. Recycling helps cut down on this waste, making sure plastic gets a second life instead of becoming a permanent resident of a landfill. Recycling is also a big deal for the future. Right now, more and more countries are banning single-use plastics because of how much damage they cause. But as long as plastics exist, we need to find a way to deal with it responsibly. Scientists are even working on new ways to recycle plastic more efficiently, turning it into fuel, building materials, and even clothing. That means your old soda bottle could one day be part of a jacket, a pair of sneakers, or even the roads you walk on. So next time you finish a drink, think about where that bottle could go. With a little help from recycling centers, it could have an exciting new life. And who knows, maybe one day you'll be wearing your old water bottle without even realizing it. Now if there are recycling centers near you, drop the location in the comments below to raise awareness. And hey, if you want to learn more about how things are made ethically, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next one.